Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. For today's lesson, we're going to do some grade two, make a 10 method within 20. Now, make a 10 method means we take one of the numbers when we're doing addition, right? And we're going to try to get that number to 10. We're not going to try. We're going to actually do it. But the question is, where are we going to get the numbers that we need in order to create 10? So, for example, let's look at 8 plus 4. Let's say I wanted to make the 8 become a 10. I would have to do 8 plus 2 to make 10. But where am I going to get that 2 from? I'm going to get it from the 4. So it's a way to like develop number fluency, right? Instead of just memorizing that 8 plus 4 equals 12, which is fine, but it helps to develop number fluency, which is also going to help your child much later on when they're taking algebra and they have to factor quadratic trinomials. It's going to help them like be able to do those problems much more efficiently. All right, so where are we going to get the 2 from that we need to put with the 8 to make 10? We're going to get it from the 4. So what's going to happen is we're going to break the 4 down into 2 and 2, right? And then we go like this just to show a visual, and now this 8 and 2 comes together and becomes a 10, and then we add the 2 that was left over, and 10 plus 2 is 12. Another benefit of this method is that oftentimes it's a lot easier for students, especially young children, to add when there's a, num a zero digit in the ones place, right? So we have 10 plus 2 is 12. All right, we'll do the same thing with 9 plus 7, and notice how I wrote 9 plus 7 twice because we're going to do it two different ways because we actually have options. I could have made the 4 into a 10, so you can make the 8 into a 10, or you can make the 4 into the 10. You can make either number into a 10. It's up to you. So 9 plus 7, let's first make the 9 into a 10, because that kind of makes sense, because 9 is closer to 10. So let's make the 9 into a 10. But where am I going to get the 1 from that I need to add to the 9 to make it a 10? I'm going to get it from the 7. So what I do is I break the 7 down into 1 plus 6, because 1 plus 6 is 7, and that's where I'm getting my 1 from. So 9 and 1 is going to become 10. Hope this doesn't get too crowded down here. But then I bring the 6 down. I got 10 plus 6, which is 16. All right, so that's 16. 9 plus 7 is 16, of course. But let's do it another way. Let's say we make the 7 into a 10, right? So where am I going to get the 3 from? Because we know from our addition facts up to 10 that 7 plus 3 is 10. So where am I going to get that 3 from? I'm going to get it from the 9. So the 9 is going to get broken down into 6 plus 3. So the 9 becomes 6 plus 3. So then you just combine the 7 and the 3 to create a 10. So now we have this 6 plus that 10, and 6 plus 10 is also 16 because of the commutative property. If you know that 10 plus 6 is 16, you also know that 6 plus 10 is 16. So that's that. Now, 9 plus 3 over here, let's just make this 9 into a 10. Where are we going to get the 1 from that we need to add from it? We're going to get it from the 3. So we're going to break the 3 down into 1 plus 2. And then we do 9 and 1 like that. And then we have a 10 from the 9 and 1. And then we bring this 2 down. And we have 10 plus 2, which gives us 12. Last but not least, let's deal with this 8 plus 6. The 8 plus 6, let's make the 8 into a 10. So where am I going to get the 2 from? Since 8 plus 2 is equal to 10, I'm going to get the 2 from this 6. So I'm going to break the 6 down into 2 plus 4. And then we got 8 and 2, which is where I get my 10 from, because this is the make a 10 method. That's why we call it that. Everything in math is called what it's called for a reason. Keep that in mind. That'll help you to remember what you're supposed to do a lot of the times. So 8 and 2 gives me the 10. Then I bring this 4 down, and I got 10 plus 4, which is 14. And that's today's lesson.